Exotic Rift Magazine. Hello and welcome to Cataclysm Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.cataclysm.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and it's my um, I'm, I'm really happy to be uh, talking to drummer uh, Steve Dorsman from the band um, Images of Eden. Um, we've talked to Steve um, several times in the past. Um, it's always great talking to you, Steve, and uh, we're talking to you because um, your band um, Images of Eden just dropped a new five-song EP, which I think is called um, uh, Weathered and Torn. So let's talk about the new EP. Sure, Jason. Thanks for having me on as well. Um, yeah, so um, basically uh, late last year, um, right before Christmas, we ended our tour with King Bank Malmsteen um, across the U.S. So as soon as we got home, we wanted to really get back to work and get back out on the road as soon as possible. Um, we all kind of uh, had a powwow and we decided, let's do an EP because we wanted to do a little bit of a, a heavier delivery this time. Okay. And just because of the past couple of years of what this whole world's been through, you know, we wanted to show a real organic reaction from us. And uh, we, so, we, so we got a lot heavier. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but the undertone of the sonority of it is, is all still there, you know. So it's a kind of a fine balancing act that we had to do. Yeah. Um, but... Um, yeah, you know, it came through, I think, pretty good. So we had to really go to work um, really quick to get this EP recorded, get it turned into the label, and so on, so we can have a release date before our tour starts here this fall. So it was really a, a kind of a, an alarm bell. You know, we all had to get to work really quick once we decided that. Um, really was back in February and we kind of made our plan that let's let's record the EP, let's write the songs, let's get it out. Uh, we yeah. just booked the Michael Schinker tour, you know, right right yeah. around then as well. So it's not perfect. It's just, it's a perfect storm. Let's do it. So we worked hard, hard, hard for months and we got it all done and now here we are. So As, as you guys always do, I mean, um, for anybody out there that says rock is dead, I, I guess they haven't heard of Images of Eden because I can honestly tell you, um, save it. You guys, over the last few years, one, one of the few bands that really kind of, um, you know, at least to me, stand out. I mean, um, when I think of some of the great new bands, you guys are right up there. I mean, um, you know, some other, other bands that kind of come to mind are um, Vante. They're, they're another band that just, you know, they just released their debut album. They're all over um, Billboard. There's this other band, Voodoo Moonshine. And you guys are like kind of, um, of all the up and coming bands, like maybe like top two bands that people are really kind of um, paying attention for. Um, you know what re whatever reason and you know images of Eden. I mean you guys um, you guys work hard you, you deliver the good it's it's uh, it's great music I mean um, your last album I think was um, Angel Born was named album is that correct yes correct. and, and um, I mean it was even better than the previous album and that's saying something I, I think you guys get um, each new product you release is better than what came before and, and that's um, not always an easy thing to do no it's not and you know it's like when we you know, after we get finished with an album, we kind of look at each other. It's like we got to top this now, but we don't. We don't fret on that really. We just no. let time kind of pass, and really, you know, we just stay really connected to the pulse of the times the world's in right now. Yeah, you know, yeah. when we do that, we just kind of put our reaction and our take on it, and boom, a song comes out. So yeah. I think with with that methodology that we use in, in, in writing lately. Um, that it works uh, to stay current and be relatable and be relatable on these world issues and how people are feeling and let's face it it's a it's a, it's a screwed up world out there you know and oh, sure. are, are, are searching for some peace and some some hope um, you know whatever it may be but you know we we give that and we wrap it up into heavy metal music you know and so you know when, when you want to have a release as a fan and, and you're frustrated inside yeah. you, you want to get knocked around a little bit at the concert or when you put the record on you want to get banged around a little bit you know yeah. that's your release I mean but, yeah but the difference is with us we, we still have that underlying tone of we'll present you the problem but we're also going to present you a solution and not leave you hanging so I think that's the well roundedness that this, this music has we have yeah I mean you, you really you really said it all right there Stephen and, and what I think is um, beautiful about you know the time that we're going through um, in the world right now like you said um, a lot of problems in the world, um, you know, it, it's beautiful to have like, um, you know, some new music to listen to because I'll tell you, um, there's a truckload of bands, a lot of bands these days, as you know, um, 
live off their catalog of music. Like, you know, why, why bother um, putting out any new music? People don't buy CDs like they used to. But I think if you deliver a good enough product, people will buy it. People will come to the concert. People will um, check it out. And, and as much as I may love some of those bands that are just kind of living on their catalog of music, um, I dig bands that are continually putting out new music. You're giving me something new, you know? Well, and you know, and I agree with you on that, and, and I like that. And we don't—it's not kind of in our vocabulary, so to speak, to to get lazy with this. This is something that means a lot to us: playing music, writing music, yeah. expressing ourselves. And not only that is where we're at today is we're helping other people. You know, we're we're a source of of, of hope and and all kinds of things in that direction that you wouldn't get from metal music normally. Yeah. You know, but I tell you, if you pay attention to our lyrics. I mean, it says it all, you know, and we're not a Christian band or anything by any means no. because we're, we're not perfect over here, okay? We're, we're, you know, we're all broken, you know? Yeah. All of us are. We're all broken in some way, and, you know, and, and we're going to share that with you, and we're going to share our path of how we turned around. So it's kind of a, a pain it forward thing, but, um, you know, I, I really enjoy what we're doing and, and the message we give and, and all that that I just spoke about yeah. and i was just telling gordon my singer the other day you know I, I i wouldn't even be going out on this tour we got coming up if, if it wasn't that way that's yeah. kind of where i am in my life you and, know and i mean? think i think the hard work ethic w that uh, is within your band i think uh, it's finally starting to pay off for you guys the last couple of years i mean i mean images of eden people more and more people are becoming aware of the band um you guys yeah, are constantly I, putting new product know, out there you're right you're right and, and that we have been building and you don't do that by sitting there on your back catalog you know you got to keep current yeah. you got to keep moving people and touching people and moving them you know like i said so uh, we try to stay current and we try to keep our thumb on the pulse of the world and you know we kind of tell you what we think uh -huh. so we hope that's a that's a good relatable release for people um, yeah. that they need right now and uh you know, it sure is for us. It kind of it kind of reminds me of something I heard Nikki Six say once in an interview, which is, um, you know, I, um, I'm a huge Motley Crue fan, but I remember Nikki Six once saying that, you know, the thing with Motley Crue, like, um, if you pick out any two albums from their catalog, no two albums sound the same. They they try to kind of you know, kind of progress with every album they put out. Sure, and he was sure. saying, you know, just like, he goes, you go back to Too Fast for Love, people thought we were, a, you know, we had elements of punk in our music, people thought we were a punk band, but then with Shout the Devil, okay, you think you know Motley Crue? Okay, listen to this now. Yeah, then Theater of Pain came out, and it's like, <laughs> wow, that's a whole other glam aspect from Motley Crue no one's ever seen. So, yeah, yeah they were keeping current with the times, you know, so they could succeed. And, and so they were smart in doing what they did. And I think because you guys are along those... Anything in life, if you, if you stay the same, you know, things get, get stale real quick. Because I know think that, you guys so. are along those lines in, in that sense because, um, like, I was watching the um, new video you have for, I think it's called Count Zero. And, Count to Zero, yes. Uh -huh. And you guys are just really on fire in the video, but I tell you, um, Gordon's vocals, um, like, he's, he's, um, he's always been a great singer, but I don't know... Um, in that particular song, the video, I always know it's just um, like nothing he's done before. And um, if you listen to that and anything, um, images that he even ever uh, put out, I mean, I can't say, sit here and say, oh, um, they're trying to be Metallica. You guys are just being who you are, you know, and, and with each... Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, and, and being a little bit heavier on this EP, and I'll tell you, if you, if you have you heard the whole EP yet? Or? I haven't actually, I heard a couple of the songs, but... Um, I heard, um, okay, well, I, I'll tell you, if you yeah. want to trip out on Gordon's vocals yeah. and, and his range and his capabilities, listen to it, yeah, I because mean, you're going to trip, because, I mean, you know, he does, he does a, we stretched him, he does a lot of cool stuff, and it's modern, and uh, you'll even get a little growly here and there. Yeah, you, you know, know, in fact, the, some stuff in the courses, so, like, um, let's see, like, Coexistence is a good one for you to hear, or okay. Weathered and Torn, the title track. I mean, those are just great rippers, you know. And I'm gonna, so, I'm I, gonna I listen to the entire thing. Hear those yeah. Because you're gonna see how much we kind of spe spread the spectrum out for us. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna listen to the whole thing. I just was at work the last couple of days, but I will tell you, um, just in, in that one song, "Count to Zero, he sounds possessed, but in a good way. <laughs> sure, yeah, it's a little bit of a sinister delivery. Yeah, and we needed to match the lyrics and the story, so it all kind of, kind of goes together, you know. Yeah. But it's a really strong, positive message in that video, though. I mean, he's talking about how a guy ruined his life, and then he's talking about get yourself off up the floor 
um, time's running out. It's time to make a change today, you know? So, yeah. like I say, we present a problem, but we always present a solution with it in our songs. And yeah. that's what's different Yeah, about it. and I like the fact, you know, you look on uh, Images of Eden's kind of story that you guys have lived so far. I mean, even just the last tour you mentioned doing with Ingfe, I know um, at the beginning of the tour... Um, John Five was supposed to be on that tour for whatever reason. He decided to pull himself off the tour, and that guy that kind of bumped you guys up, you know, uh, on the tour. And then I mean, um, it was just you guys and Inkfei, and, and you kind of became the, I guess, you know, main act after Inkfei, which I think uh, really uh, helped to shine a light on you guys. Yeah, it, it did. I mean, we played for some really packed theaters across America, and um, yeah, I mean, I'll have to tell you though, if John Five would have actually went on that tour, we probably would never have gotten to play. That's what I'm saying, yeah, I mean... Um, I'm, I'm just saying, honestly, we would have never even probably seen the stage, just because... He's so popular um, himself. Yeah. Baby sound checks yeah. took seven hours a day. Wow, wow. And then by the time he was done, doors were opening, so where would John Five fit into that? Yeah. And then we're, we fit into that, you know what I mean? So, yeah, John Fight bailed out on it just because of certain reasons. I don't know exactly yeah. what yeah. they were, yeah. but yeah. he may have known, known something that we didn't, you know what I mean? So, um, anyhow, it, it worked out in our favor because we got to play, you know. That, that's we the point just, I'm making, and, and for, for whatever reason, uh, it worked out in your favor, and I think more and more people were going to those shows. And I'm not just talking about how great Inkfei was, but um, I, I kept reading reviews about um, the opening band, Images of Eden, and how great they were, you know? Oh, nice. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those, and that's great to hear because, you know, it's a tough crowd for Inkfei. They're there to see him. So we did a good job of pleasing everybody, and I think, so, yeah, it was successful. Yeah, and when you get on a it tour was, like... It was a yeah. hard tour, though, I had to, I had to admit. So. Yeah, when you, when you get on a tour like that, though, especially... Um, you know, I mean, Infake's band, what Infake does is really different from Im Images of Eden. So the fact that um, his crowd was kind of um, liking what you guys were doing, I, I mean, um, I think that says it all right there. You guys really um, captured something with that audience. Well, yeah, I mean, there was a few nights, I mean, that the crowd was just nuts trying to crawl up on stage and everything. It was just nuts. I mean, it's, but it was really cool to see the reaction they had for us. That happened quite often, actually. So, um I don't think anybody appreciated that, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. you know anybody else but us. But you know what I mean. But it was all good. So I mean, yeah, we got our we got our moment there a few times, and it was it was nice to see. I imagine when when something like that happens to you for the first time, it's almost kind of like um, you know your rock star moment where you feel kind of like um, you know we have arrived. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, you kind of get a feeling, but boy, you're sure charged up and energized. And like, good luck going to sleep that night at your hotel because you're so fired up. But yeah. it's good stuff, and it was, it was good building blocks. I mean, we still have a lot more to accomplish. Yeah. Still, I mean, I think high goals out there yet that we have not um, met yet that we're yeah. working towards. So, um, but yeah, we're we're a working band that continually stays busy, constantly puts goals in front of yeah. ourselves, and we go out and attack them and attain them. Because, you know, you, yeah. uh, I mean, my honestly, my only complaint, which, but I understand, like, is um, five-song EP, but, but um, like, I, I would love to have a full length, but I'll tell you what, Steve, I understand you guys want to get something new out there, continue to do this tour with Michael Schenker, so so I get it, but I'll, I, on that note, I'll say this, um, you guys just put out five new songs that some bands will never put out, because they're just living on their catalog of music. Yeah, and you know, we're not... I'll tell you, for the record, we're not a huge fan of EPs, okay? Yeah, yeah. We, we were planning on doing a full-length record to follow up Angel Born, yeah. but we were, then we were talking to the record label, and we were talking about really kind of what the fans are aching for out there, yeah. and what we had in us that we're capable of, and that's why we decided, let's, let's show our aggression on this one. Let's show, you know, our true organic reaction mm -hmm. feelings to these past two years yeah. that we've all went through here in America. I mean, we you, you can just go down the list. Oh, sure. The, the, the politics of everything, the man-made disease that came out and started killing everybody, yeah. killing our family members, our friends, um, the shutting down, not able to tour, not able to go play. It just, you know, work, you know, your real job, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, affected people don't have no money, uh, gas prices are high. I mean, people are pissed. I mean, we're pissed. We're normal people. Yeah. We work hard every day to try to make a living and take care of our family. We played music. That's our outlet. Yeah, I mean, okay? I can tell you. you know. In our music, I, we try to help other people. That's how unselfish we are about all this. It, ain't, it is not for us. It's not for us to go up and kick a beer can around and high five and be rock stars. That's not why we're in this. Yeah, you know. We're in this because we're capable of putting out a great message for everybody, paying all of our mistakes 
forward what we learn to help people. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing it in metal music. And I don't know if, you know, there probably may be another band doing it like we are, but I tell you what, we're very organic and this is not a gimmick. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I get that, and you know, I live in California, um, Los Angeles, and, and we were we were as locked down as anybody. And in fact, you know, we had a governor here who was kind of proud at the time. Um, you know, you couldn't go see a movie. All the clubs. Oh, I know all about him. I'm just right next door here in Arizona. So. Yeah, yeah. All the clubs were shut down, and and, and uh, he actually got on TV. He was kind of bragging, "Oh, the entertainment business is never going to be what it was. I don't know if we're ever going to allow the movie theater or these clubs." Oh gosh. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, you got a way to make a living, but what? A, you know, and and that even though in some people's eyes they're like, "Oh, these bands are just musicians or druggies or this or whatever." I'm like, you know what? You're taking. You're not realizing that that's these people's way to make a living, and it's not even just about the bands. It's the it's the club owners. I mean, even the whiskey in Los Angeles, legendary club where Van Halen and the Doors, that was in danger of being closed down because you know after two years they're not making having any shows, not making any money. Luckily, yeah, I, I don't care how high and mighty and big name you are, when you're not making no money over a period of time, things are going to go down. You know. Yeah. And, yeah, it was a scary time. I'm glad they did. It didn't happen, but it did happen to a lot of people. Yeah, those, yeah, those and you know, so I mean, you know, so our overall reaction, we're pissed off. Yeah, okay? and you can we're hear it in the music. Guys, you know, to put out a good message. Yeah. Right now, we're pissed off. You can and hear it in the that's music. That's why we wanted to take a time out. Yeah, we wanted to make this EP a heavy EP. We wanted to put it out, give everybody what they need, show them how we feel, and now after this tour is done, we're gonna start recording our full length album. Yeah, you, and so and, there you go again. We're back to work and probably going to go do another tour after that. So. And, and you can hear in the music, you know, um, how pissed off you guys are. And I will say this, but what, the only thing I really enjoyed about the lockdowns and the pandemic was this, that um, I remember like when um, bands started doing these streaming things on Facebook because they had no other way uh -huh. to communicate with the uh -huh. fans. And I thought, you know what, what a, what a cool way to kind of say, okay, you know what, if we can't go out and play live. We're going to find a way to kind of still do something for the fans. We'll go out there and communicate or put on a live show yeah. in our backyard. Yeah, and, and I dug that. You, you know, that's how creative you get. You, you know, you, you got to keep rolling somehow. Uh -huh. at, least, at least a little bit of that went on. I know we were we were approached to do something like that, but we just, you know, we are a face-to-face, in-person type of band. I hear you, I hear you. And, and you know, the, the, you come yeah. to see us play live. Are you going to come see us live on uh, October 1st in L.A.? October 1st? Um, you know, I, I would, except for one thing. I, I'm going to be on vacation, for you, but next time you guys come to town, but which I know, okay. um, it's not till next year or whenever, but I promise I, I will come see you guys. Okay, no problem. I was going to say, if you wanted to come, we'll make sure we get you hooked up. But if you can't make it, no worries. Yeah, um, thanks Thanks for invite, though, Steve. But, but, you know, the thing with those streaming shows that they, the bands were doing, too, once um, Facebook got wind of that, I heard they started wanting to monetize it. Okay, well, you guys are going to use Facebook for your platform to do this. You know, we want to get some of that money. <laughs> before I mean, we're a face-to-face -face band because when we're talking on stage yeah. in between songs we got a little story for you we yeah. got a little something we want to tell you um before we go into every song and uh it kind of really paints the picture for everybody yeah so. yeah and before we let you go steve i, I want to really uh, let people know that um you know you, you are the band's drummer but you're very involved with the band from what i understand um I mean, um, you know, you do a lot of interviews with Gordon. I mean, uh, previous times I've interviewed you has always been with um, Gordon. Um, I know that you direct the videos, like the, the one we're talking about, Count to Zero. Um, I was reading you directed that. So let's talk about, um, first of all, how you got into directing videos. and Did that come as a result of you playing, you know, your music in that? Well, it, it, it did. I, I've always had a kind of a... Um, I don't know, kind of a, a knack for lack of a better word, you know, even as a, a little kid, I used to sit there with my tape player and play music and then turn the TV down and watch yeah. it and kind of like put scene work together with the music, you know, and kind of daydream about that. So I always kind of had that, that uh, kind of want to do some of that. And, um, you know, I, I got around the, the film business after I retired actually from playing music. I, I retired when my son was born. Okay. 21 years ago. That's, I'm aging myself now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I quit playing music. I just didn't want to be the dad that was never there or wow. whatnot, you know. So I just like, yeah, I gave it my world. I'm done now. So, but during that time, of course, I was crushed over it every time I maybe heard a, a song that I, you know, it brings back a memory. And I, I came out here to do this and I didn't. But anyway, about 10, 12 years later, uh, I kind of met Gordon, you know, and yeah. I had a band 
called Born of Fire. We kind of started up out of the blue, and I, music kind of found me again. And then um, during that period of time, right before that, my son got into some film work stuff. Oh, wow. And I uh, was doing some commercials and movie work and stuff, and I was always there with him, you know, taking him to all these things. And I just kind of fell in love with the filmmaking aspect of it all. You know, the cameras, the editing, and all the logistics behind the scenes and whatnot. And so I, I kind of said, hmm, well, I'm starting music back up again. I always kind of had a love for it. So I plucked the right people out of the industry, you know. We made some music videos. So my first one I made, I just, I, it was for Born of Fire, wow. my old band. And um, just to make a long story short, the singer we had, we had a record label and everything. And he kind of took the money and split. Wow. And, wow. and nobody heard from him ever again. And, and, you know, we had all this music. We wanted to put a record out. I was like, oh. So we kind of searched the internet, and we found Gordon, and he was willing to come and do the record with us, so he put some lyrics on it, and we rehearsed it, we recorded it, put the record out, and we did a music video together, wow. that was my first one, so, um, but then after that, you know, um, Gordon kind of dangled the IOE thing that he had going on, he's mm -hmm. like, I got this Images of Eden thing, I kind of been working and doing records, kind of being the guy that plays all the instruments, or wow. bringing mm -hmm. instruments. Instrumentalist into the studio to help me do it, whatnot. But I really want to put a real band together and, and put this together. I'm like, okay, well, then I, I, you know, I had my thing that I was already doing, but then the, his was so good, and I fell in love with it. And I called him one day, almost in tears, and I said, I'm in. Not only am I in, I'm in full. That means I'm putting my other band to bed, and we're going full board with this. So yeah. Uh, Gordon and I, and I'm, I'm a business guy, so I manage, I direct, I, I, I run business, that's what I do. And uh, so I told them, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the right character members, guys, that need to be in this band. We're going to rebrand this thing. We're going to do a demo, and we're going to get assigned to a record label, and we're going to take it from there. And that's what we did. I mean, that in itself, I mean, who has a record deal these days? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, the fact that you guys oh, even... It's impossible to get one these days unless you have a great sales history. Okay. okay. Yeah, and that's probably why you do have one, not just your history, but the fact well, that, you know, all this business stuff. Well, you know? I have to tell you, they, they, they saw the potential in us. Mm. They knew we were veterans in this business. They, I explained to them I've always been a day late and a dollar short in this business my whole career. And I, I, just, I just had a, you know, a heart-to-heart -heart with them. I said, something's got to change. We got good music. We need somebody to give us a shot. I mean, you and guys are on a great. Listened. Yeah, I they think they listened yeah. and they said they offered us a deal. So I'm like, awesome. So yeah, yeah, I'm we sure. put out Soul Rise. We went on tour with wow. uh, Metal Church, Doral Pesh, Warlock. Did pretty good. We came home. We went full board on the next album, Angel Born, which is a terrific album. Yeah, great yeah. album. In fact, we haven't even toured enough on that album yet. That's okay, why I was getting ready to ask. Do some more touring on that record, but. But we did that, and everything went really good. We charted, like, number 19. We peaked out on the metal radio charts. Um, the album before, we peaked at number 26 on the metal radio charts. So yeah. now here we got the CP, you know, and it's going to radio in U.S. and Europe, and we're doing a full U.S. tour with Michael Schinker and Eric Martin wow. a week after the album's released, so it's like a perfect storm. I to mean, release your record and then go tour immediately. You know, that's the way you always like to do things. I mean, so that, that's it just a, worked out that way, and now here we go. That's a cool bill. I mean, um, Michael Schenkel, um, Eric Martin from Mr. Big. Um, you know, Mr. Big was one of those bands that they were a lot bigger in Japan than they ever were in the United States. And they're one of those bands that, like, typically they would do, like, maybe four or five shows in Japan a year. And they, oh, would, just, wow. they would just make bank, you know? It, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, he was the radio king back in the late 80s. I remember, you know, yeah. he was the radio king back then. And then if you remember um, when they put out that first Mr. Big um, album, that was really kind of a heavy album. And then they had uh -huh. that hit with To Be With You off the last al you know, ne next album. Everybody thinks that's what, what, what Mr. Big does. It's just one song, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with Billy Sheehan in there, you know, it got kind of progressive, which was great. Yeah, yeah. And you know, um, I, I can't remember if I talked to you about this um, during the last interview or not, but you mentioned touring with Metal Church. So, um, did you did you um, get a chance to? Um, was that when uh, Mike Howe was in the van, and were you guys touring yep. with them when he? Um, yeah, Matt was Mike, and we became good buddies during that tour, and we were just heartbroken. You yeah. know, I hear that news. You know, last year, or well, I think that's when it was last year. Yeah, but, yeah, about a year uh, ago. You know, and his own bandmates didn't even know he had some issues going on. Yeah, you know, that's the thing that, that I was. The reading. only one that really knew was the bus driver. You know, that yeah. I saw later on in Texas that. 
later on, he would say, yeah, late at night, Mike would come up while the guys were sleeping, and we had some heart-to-heart talks, but, I mean, I, you know, you, that's another thing, you know, yeah. you just don't know what's going on inside of someone, man. Someone might be smiling and yeah. look just fine on the outside, and, and you're just not on the inside, and they might need a gesture or some good words. And that's yeah. another thing, he just fell in love with us out there because of, that's what we did, you know? And, yeah. But I didn't know he was struggling, I didn't, neither oh. did his bandmates. Oh, no, know? no, so, nobody had a clue. In fact, I just talked to Stat, Stat Howland, the drummer, you yeah. know, just just the other day, you know, and we're good buddies, you know, in fact, he's coming to our Las Vegas show here, coming up here in a few weeks, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's why I can't come to the show uh, this week. I'm going to be in Las Vegas. So. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, Las Vegas is sold out now anyway, so yeah, yeah. I couldn't help you if I... <laughs> no, I know, I know. Uh, anyways, um, anyways, you know, Steve, so I was wondering, in regards to the video um, directing, um, you know, I also imagine it makes it a lot cheaper than having to hire a video director, a guy in the band is, can do it, you know? Well, yeah, you would think, but um, we, you know, if you've seen our videos, yeah. you know, we have a big budget on High these, tech, so yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, takes, it takes some good money to get these things looking that great, you know? But yeah, I, I do save some money just because of my know-how. I, I write the treatments, I direct it, I, I bring in the, the good... Um, director of photography editors you know what what not whatever needs to happen on this particular one count zero we had vfx cgi guys um, you know all kinds of stuff we had like a five-man team on this video on, on the technical side so there was a lot of stuff going on and, and, and how collaborative i mean i imagine um, to some extent being that um you're the guy that does that in the band directs the videos that that after doing so many of these videos um Everybody at the record label and the band's got to be like, okay, well, whatever Steve says, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, the record label was just blown away by it, you know, and I'll sure I'll leave it up for people's opinion, you know, before we put it out. But, you know, everybody seems to really love it first shot. And, uh, you know, again, I put a lot of time on these before we even start filming. I mean, the average video, like this last one, I had 93 days of pre production. Oh, wow. Just before we were ready to hit record. Yeah. So it was a lot of work to put together. And you think do you think there will be another video from the EP or? Uh, I can't say yes or no. I mean, Just, yeah. this EP could really take off, and another single could really take off, and there might be a demand for it. And maybe that, I don't know. Maybe. So, um, like, um, how many how many minutes do you think you guys when you do this Michael Schenker tour that you guys are going to be um, um, on stage for like thirty minutes? Thirty minutes, pretty much standard. Eric Martin gets thirty minutes too. Sheikers on there for two hours. Okay, and then I was curious, how um, how many songs off the new EP do you think will be in the live set? Uh, three songs. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, you're getting yeah, three we're, we're, yeah, we're we're pumping it out. Wow, that that's 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 impressive. And um, and you know, you mentioned Count Zero will be one of them as well. Yeah, and and you mentioned about the the record label. I mean, great label. I mean, I think people will be surprised to find out um, that you guys are on the same label as um. Candlebox and Puddle of Mud, but that's what I love about it. They've got uh, they've got a crazy roster of artists that um, everything rap to pop to metal. But I think yeah, that's what makes it a great. A very fair label, and uh, they have a very smart business plan on how they work with their bands, and so mm-hmm. that's why they're surviving. So uh, Tim and Mark that run run the yeah. label over there, they're they're outstanding human beings. They're also friends, like they're like family friends to us, you know. So we're very close to them. We've got a great relationship. We talk every week, yeah. you know, so it's, the communication is good. Um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. So, oh, sure, sure. I mean, sure, they give you a path and opportunity, but you got to go work it, man. And oh, you sure. got to bring it home for them. Oh, They're sure. just not going to roll out a red carpet and say, here you go. That's just not the 80s anymore. So no, but you'll I get think, an opportunity, yeah. but you got to go work your ass off. You and you guys... It. You guys so have, we've been trying to do that for these guys. I think the last couple of releases since you've been with this label, I think I really do think you guys have delivered the goods, as they say, because, I, I mean, like you said, you're out there working it. And, and um, honestly, I think you're right in saying that um, as great of an album as Angel Born is, um, you know, you really haven't had a fair chance to get out there and really tour tour behind that album like, like maybe you should have. But at the <coughs> same time people responding to the album so um and, and even though you maybe think oh we haven't really been able to tour people are listening to that people are still purchasing it and people are aware of it yeah sure and, and you know we're gonna play a few songs off angel born and some songs off the ep yeah. so we're gonna give it a nice up-to-date mix for everybody so it should be a really fun fun time 
And, and you know, fi final thing I'll say is I think another thing that really makes um, you guys stand out as a band, I think the songwriting within the band is really strong because um, I think that's what makes any great band. You got to have um, you got to have great songs, great songwriting. Uh, I mean, and, and like you're saying, you guys seem to progress with um, with each with each new release, and um, it just kind of uh, that's one of the things that I, I think stands out about you guys. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to give a lot of credit to my guys. Yeah. Um, number one, Gordon. He he's kind of the mastermind of the well. He is the mastermind of the lyrics and kind of putting these shell songs together mm. for us. Here's my idea, and all of our guys are stellar. You know, they're stellar musicians at what they do. They've been doing it a long time. So, They're all on the same page in our minds and our hearts. So, so that's where I go back to building this band when we rebranded, getting the right character, right guys in this group because then it works. Okay? Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, he passes the shell around and everybody puts their fabulous take on it and it just becomes a collaboration of a lot of greatness, you know, and then it just kind of comes together seamlessly because we are on the same page. Yeah. We all have the same common goal and heart and message we're putting out there. So it's it kind of works easy in that sense, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and, and it's amazing because, um, uh, you know, you guys explained that before, how kind of before Images of Eden was kind of G Gordon Titsworth as his one-man band, um, and not even knowing that um, when I interviewed you guys the first time, it's amazing because it sounds like a it sounds like a full band, but I'd imagine kind of now that you guys have these band, um, guys in the band a few years, everybody's um, played live together. You go in the studio, everybody really feels like they're a part of it. Yeah, everybody's gelling right now, and we're kind of peaking right now at, as a band, uh -huh. right at the right time. Oh, sure. um, and I just feel this tour right now, and this this video, this record. This is kind of our turning point right now for Images of Eden. I really believe that. So, you know, after Christmas, first of the year, let's see where this all goes. But I really believe this is our turning point. And, yeah. you know, really, we want to try to get over to Europe and really deliver this over there as well. Because we have not done that yet. Oh, wow, amazing. And we need to. And the talks are to do that. And that's our next step. So, have you guys we've even... already toured America three and a half times already. So How about Canada? Have you guys ever been to Canada? I have not. Oh, amazing. Wow, that, yeah, I have not. And so we need to get all that taken care of. Like I said, we have some other goals, and playing for seas of people is one of them, and getting out of the yeah. United States and kind of putting images of eating out everywhere. Let's go global. Oh, sure, sure. That's that's the goal. Um, before I let you go and we wrap it up for today, Steve, let me ask you, because I know um, on um, Angel Born, uh, you guys did a, a Triumph cover, um, and we talked a little bit about that last time, so I was curious... Um, you know, how big of a Triumph fan were you, and, and did you get a chance to see the Triumph documentary? I did not get to see the documentary yet, but I got to see that. I love Triumph. I yeah. was a big fan when I was younger. Yeah. Um, you know, and they were they were on the radio all the time. It was kind of a mainstream thing. It was a feel-good band. When we decided um, to do a cover to tune, we were thinking about doing the song. It was my idea I brought to the table for everyone, and like, we should really think about doing this. It, it kind of sent us the message that we give already, you know, and yeah. it's, some, it's an anthem that everybody needs. I mean, and so we thought about it and thought about it, and a lot of signs came to us in different directions, yeah. like telling us this is the song you need to do. So we're like, okay, well, let's just do this for fun. This is just kind of a filler until yeah. Angel Born comes out. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, no one wanted to put it out to radio or nothing. We didn't want to put it on the record. So we're just doing it for fun. We're, you know, we're going to make a music video out of it. So, but we recorded the song and then the record label heard it. And again, they freaked out and said, this has got to be on the record. And we were wow. like, oh, we weren't going to put it on the record. It kind of messes up our sequence of bookend songs we got on there. But... We found a place for it, and they really urged us to put it on the record, and we did, and I'm glad we did, because everybody really loves it. Now, here's the really, and we play this live, too, by wow, the way. Wow. We play this live, and it's great live. Um, but by the way, when we put the music video out for this, um, Triumph actually saw it. Oh, wow. And so, Triumph actually contacted us directly. And, and, and they said, we just saw your remake of our song, and we are all blown away, exact words. Wow, that's, a, that's and, amazing. And they asked, can you send us over the raw video, uh, the master video for that, because we want to uh, upload it on our social media platforms wow. and endorse you guys. Yeah. We're like, absolutely. So we gave it to them, and they uploaded it on all their pages, man, and said, here's the best cover of our song that's mm -hmm. ever been done. 
Well, you know, and so how big of a Gilmore fan were you back in the day? Well, I mean, probably he probably got mixed in with with all the the hype drummers back then. So I'll be honest with you, not a huge huge fan of them. Okay. Because I just you know yeah yeah maybe if there was internet back then I would oh, sure. be a little more aware. You yeah. Know? But you know, but he's great. You know, I mean, and then trying to. You know how we wanted to remake this song. We wanted to stay true to the classical, yeah, yeah, has, but still put our own touch on it. So I really studied him, and he's a really j- jazzy type drummer. Oh, sure. You know, and it was tough. Man. I'm gonna tell you, it was a mother. But once I got my feel on what I was gonna do, it kind of acted like him a little bit on a few things, but then put my touch on it. I got it all locked in, now it's great. And that's what you want to do. And, you know, the, the hard thing about doing a cover is, you know, it's, it's double-edged thorn because if you do that, then people are thinking, uh, oh, well, I'm going to have to cover somebody else's song. But, see, that's the thing with a band like Images of Eden. You guys um, are just great writers, like I was saying, and you got your own great sound and great music. But um, that's why it's smart to do it like that. Like, you know, we're going to stick as true to the original song as, as possible. And, and I think what you guys accomplished, too, because... The thing with Triumph is, I remember growing up back in the 70s and 80s, I mean, Triumph was all over, even MTV. They, they were big in the 80s, and then they were one of those bands, for whatever reason, kind of just everybody forgot about um, yeah, for, for yeah, a while. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just one of those things that happened, but yeah, they were huge. Yeah. I mean, so, but it was an honor to play that song. I thought we did great ju- justice to the song. Oh, because sure. We studied them. We just didn't go and just butcher it. We studied them and really made sure we were doing this correctly that they would be proud if they heard this and so be it they heard it <laughs> yeah yeah oh, sure and so um last question for today steve so um who are some of your favorite drummers who are your top oh I, you know uh, there's a lot i yeah. mean when i was young of course it was neil Peart. oh you know? sure i mean even tommy lee of motley Crue yeah. was a huge influence on me back in the day uh, Kelly Smith, the ex drummer for Flotsam, was a huge influence oh, on wow. me. Greg Hall of Sacred Reich, which I know both of them. Uh, actually, Greg's coming over to my house on Saturday when we're here practicing. Um, uh, what's that like? like that. I mean, um, hey, what's that like to you know grow up listening to some guy and then because as a result of you being in your band, you get a chance to meet one of your heroes. I mean, that's got to be like the ultimate feeling. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. And I always tell Greg Hall too because he always played barefoot when he played drums. <laughs> yeah. I started doing that because I just got better action. So I'm like, I don't know if we're the only two that do that. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. there's more, but I always I always thank him for it and say I'm I'm repping you, Greg. When I go up on stage, I'm going barefoot. Yeah, wow. And you know Neil Peart, <laughs> may he rest in peace. I, I tell you, what what a great guy to. Um, have on your list of influences because you know a lot a lot of people don't even realize neil pert was the new guy in rush for 40 years and yet um he's the one that wrote all the lyrics to all the songs yep, we love absolutely yep. yeah yeah well yeah, see, drummers do have a little bit of smarts yeah i mean carmine <laughs> apiece he's one of my favorite drummers and you know he's a he's a songwriter a producer um mm-hmm. and I, I just love his physical playing i mean you know you got guys like um even roger Ty, uh taylor from queen and um and, and you know Don Henley from the Eagles, they, they they can sing as great as they can drum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and even Phil Collins. I mean, he's not a metal guy, but I mean. Oh that, yeah, well, I can I can appreciate everything. Like, but, yeah, like Phil Collins, I say. Sure, but yeah, the list goes on yeah. for me. But those are some of them off the top of my head. Yeah, but I say Phil Collins only because you know when you think that he's he's the age he is, and I mean he's gotten to the point from what I understand he's he's banged his hands up so much playing the drums that that he can't even play anymore. I mean that's that's yeah. ultimate warrior. Hopefully, hopefully you never get to that point. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, hopefully not. But I'm telling you, it's, I gotta hurry up, man. <laughs> you, you ever? You don't suffer from carpal tunnel or anything like that? What's that? You don't. A lot of drummers I know they suffer from carpet tunnel. You know, like with yeah, your. Yeah, I've already got both of my wrists done already with surgery on those, and just you know, I just try to stay in shape and keep moving. You know, and that that helps. You well, you're a metal warrior, long, Steve. It's hard to go. You're a metal warrior, so. Uh, and we love yeah. you for it. So um, thanks for doing the interview today. Like I said, I'm going to post it next week. Steve, I'll let you know as soon as it gets posted. Take care, my friend. Jason, it was my pleasure. Have a good one, buddy. Okay, anytime. Bye-bye. Chaotic Riffs Magazine.